So now we're going to continue with the expected value with a different example. And this time we're actually going to have to find the probability distributions as well as the expected profits. Mm. Okay, so an oil company is considering three sites on which to drill, described as values. And obviously these are extremely simplified versions of the kind of calculations that um, actual businesses make, but I just wanted to get the flavor of it. Okay, so we have site A right here. Site A has potential profit if oil is found of 80 million. It has a loss if no oil is found, which is 10 million. And then the probability of finding the oil is 0 0.2. Okay, so let's make a probability distribution for A. So we want profit over here, and we want the probability over here. Okay, if we find oil, if this company finds oil, they're going to make 80 million. You can just type 80, we worry about the million dollar at the end. Now, loss. Look very carefully. This is a loss, right? So this is negative because it's a loss. Now, be careful with these problems. Sometimes the loss is negative, which it is in this case. And sometimes it just means it's diminished. You just don't make as much, right? So it would say profit if oil is found is 80 million. Profit if no oil is found would be... 15 million, it'll be positive 15. So it, it'll be a lower number, right? Which doesn't make any sense in this context, of course, because if you don't have any oil, you're not going to get any money. So it, I didn't make it work here. But so this is a negative 10. It's a loss in this case. Now the probability of finding oil is 0 0.2 right here. And at this point, you have to realize that's all there is. You either find oil or you don't. That's We've simplified this down immensely. So if you find oil, 80 million, and the chances of finding that oil is 0 0.2. If you don't find oil, negative 10, and the probability of that has to make 0 0.8 because I need the probabilities to sum to 1, right? They're complements of each other. You either find oil or you don't. So you take 1 and take away 0.2. Let me go grab this. 1 take away 0.2 is 0.8. That's where it comes from. Okay, now I want to find the profit, the expected profit, the expected value. So the expected value for A. Okay, well we can do this by hand or we can do it with StatCrunch. And I'm going to do both. All you have to do, if you remember back to 3.3, .3, is multiply 80 times 0.2 plus negative 10 times 0.8 and you're done. It's that easy. <laughs> um, we learned that way back in section 3.3 .3 when we learned um, the weighted mean. It's actually on this formula if you look at it. You take each value times its probability and you add them up. It's that easy, right? So value times the probability and you add them. That's what that's saying. We don't do it with standard deviations. It's too much of a pain, but we can do it with this. And then I can also use StatCrunch. So if you're not comfortable doing it by hand, that's okay. Just hang, hang tight and I will show you StatCrunch as well. So 80 times 0.2 plus negative 10 times 0.8 and we see 8. Okay, now if that's too much for you and you just can't handle it, that's okay. So go to StatCrunch and I'm just going to kind of move over here. <laughs> and I'm going to make profit for A and the probability for A. I'm going to label these so that way I know what they are. All right, now the profit is 80, negative 10, 0 0.2, 0 0.8. And I would use stat, calculators, custom, the profit, and the probability. Compute. And there's the mean. That's all I needed. That mean is 8, right there. And of course, we know it's million dollars. That would be the unit. So it asks me to find the probability distribution. That's right here. And then the expected value, the expected profit. That's right here. So I've got my distribution and my profit. Let me make a note of that. So the distributions are up here. The probability distribution, if you will. And the expected profit are going to be down here. All right, let's move on to site B, shall we? 
Okay, so site B, um, thinking about a color here, <laughs> I think I'm going to do uh, this kind of rosy pink. Oh, I've got purple. I can do purple. Okay, so site B right here. Okay, so site B, let's make a probability distribution for B. So we need profit and we need probability. All right, if oil is found, we're going for 120 million. So 120 million, and then the loss, again, that's a loss, so that's negative. So it's going to be negative 18. The chances of finding pro oil and hitting it big is 0 0.1, so this has to be 0 0.9 because they have to add up to 1 in order to make this valid. They're complements of each other. All right, so for the mean for site B, well, okay, so I can go back in here. I can change these to profit for B, and that was 120 and negative 18. I'm actually going to get rid of some of these extra columns. I don't need them in the way. They're just mucking up my life here. All right, and then probability for B was 0 0.1 and 0 0.9. Make sure you attach the lower probability with the big win here, otherwise your answers will be all wrong. Stat calculators custom, and the values were B, and the probabilities were B, and compute, and it's negative 4.2. And again, if I did it in Desmos, it would be 120 times 0 0.1 plus negative 18 times 0 0.9, and sure enough, it's negative 4.2. So either way you want to find it, it's negative 4.2, and put a dollar sign, and then million, because this is about oil drilling. Okay, now what about site C? Site C, let's do that right over here. So profit, probability. 70 if oil is found, it's negative 5, and with the chances of finding oil is 0 0.15, so this is 0 0.85, so they add up to 1. So let's grab that. So 70 times 0 0.15 plus negative 5 times 0 0.85 gets me 6.25. And of course I could put it in here, it just takes more time, honestly. So profit for C and probability for C. So the profit was 70, negative 5. The probability was 0 0.15 and 0 0.85. And then stat calculators custom, profit, and probability 6.25. Same as when we found it by hand. All right, so the mean for C is 6.25 million done. We found all three probability distributions and all three profits. All right. So let's look at <laughs> the CEOs and let's kind of think about these three scenarios that we have going on here. We have a CEO that's an optimist that believes, you know, the good things are going to happen for them no matter what. Then we have a CEO that's a pessimist that's I wouldn't say believing the worst things that are going to happen, but is more worried about the worst things that are going to happen. And then a statistician, right, who bases everything in rational arguments and calculations. So which one picks what and why? Okay, well, let's go with the optimist first. Okay, so that's the first one on the list. So an optimist is going to ignore the probabilities, ignore the expected values, and they're just going to look for the biggest potential profit because they think they're the big winner, right? They think, hey, big money is coming my way. I'm a winner, right? That's what an optimist is. So an optimist is a gambler, right? It's a risk taker. So it's a gambler or a risk taker. They ignore the expected values and look for the biggest possible payout. Look for the biggest reward. Okay, 
So they're ignoring these values here. They're gone to them. They're dead to them. <laughs> right? Optimus, Optimus doesn't look at that. They're a gambler, right? So they're going to gamble. This is the way gamblers actually work, right? They go, big money, big money. I'm going to find the big money, right? It's going to come to me. I'm a winner. It's happening, which means they're going for that number right there. When you look at the potential profits, 80, 120, and 70, they're going to go for the biggest one. That's that 120. That's the way the optimist is going to go. So they're going to go for B, right? Because 100, so out of 100, so 80 versus 120 versus 70, they're going for the 120. They gamble on the 120. That's what makes them a gambler. And that can yield big rewards because they can get big things happening for them. All right, now what about a pessimist? Um, it's more a worrier. They're going to ignore the expected values also, and they're going to be worried about bad things, right? So this is a worried CEO, <laughs> right? Uh, worried. Um, they're nervous, right? They're aver risk averse is the word I would use, right? Risk averse. I know some people like this, right? They don't want to take risks, right? So they're going to ignore the expected values, and they're going to look for the least painful loss. Right? They're worried about that loss happening. Right? Well, okay. So let's look at the let's look at the losses. The losses are negative 10 versus negative 18 versus negative 5. If you know you have to bet, but you're afraid of losing a lot, right? Then you're going to go for this one. The negative 5. Right? That's the least painful of those bad outcomes. Right? So they, they don't want to risk the big losses. They don't want to risk these big losses. They're risk averse. So they'll go for the least bad outcome thinking, hey, if the worst happens, we can we can dig ourselves out of a negative 5. But maybe we can't dig ourselves out of a negative 10. Now, a statistician only looks at the expected value. Right? So this is rational. <laughs> so they are rational and logical. Right? A rational and logical person will look at the expected profits. Consider only the expected profits. Okay, well, let's look at those expected profits. So there's 8 versus negative 4.2 versus 6.25, right? They're obviously going to go for the 8, right? So consider only expected profits and choose the biggest one, right? The biggest payout. because they're using their head, not their heart, right? So the optimist and the pessimist lead with their hearts, right? They're, they're gambling, they're, they're afraid, right? But the statistician stays very rational and calm. See, I made the statistician the hero of the story. Um, and they say, no, 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 I'm not gonna go on my gut one way or the other. I'm gonna look at the expected outcomes and choose that. If you're interested, there's actually a very good movie about exactly this, but for baseball, called Moneyball, where Jonah Hill kind of represents this logic, right? We shouldn't pick players for basketball or baseball teams, sorry, based on our gut instincts. We should pick them based on their numbers and their percentages. And that's very much how big sports work nowadays, but it wasn't always. And if you watch the movie Moneyball, they discuss at length how that shift happened, especially for baseball.